This is a basic image that AI was able to create for me using Midjourney. But what I did with it was I brought it to life in Unreal Engine. In this video, I'll go through a quick time-lapse recap of how I created this in Unreal. The whole AI art debate has had a lot of controversies recently. No AI art images covering art stations, schools banning chat GPT. I've come to realize that whether we like it or not, AI is gonna be a big part of our future and our kids' future. History's taught me if you don't evolve with the changes, you get left behind. It's pretty scary once you realize how many jobs AI will take from us in the next 20 years. It's even more alarming is what happens if AI ever becomes sentient? I say if you can't beat them, join them. Until they become Skynet. Never join Skynet. I've started using AI quite a bit recently. I've used ChatGPT, Grammarly, Synthesia, and Midjourney, which uh, have all helped me with content creation. It does feel like you're cheating sometimes. However, you can use AI to make yourself a better artist. The scene you're watching now started off as just a prompt in mid-journey. I decided to challenge myself. The challenge? Create an AI-generated image using mid-journey. Recreate that image in a 3D environment using Unreal Engine. Give the image life and make it breathe with animation and then make it loop so you can enjoy it on repeat. All right, enough with the sentimental stuff. Let's get on with the tutorial. Just a quick disclaimer, this is not a full step-by-step -step tutorial. This is a quick time-lapse recap. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial, leave a comment, maybe I'll create one. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go into mid journey and create some sort of image that inspires you that is uh, possible to pull off an unreal engine once you have that then you're going to want to go to gaia gaia is a tool you can use to create a height map inside of unreal engine super quick and easy uh, i'm not going to do a tutorial on that but i will provide a link that shows you how to use gaia and import your height map into unreal engine Next, you want to add all of your plugins that you're going to need for the project. In this one, we used MW Auto Material, Maui Auto Material. It's a great texturing tool that allows you to add textures to height maps and get multiple different terrains on a single landscape height map. The other plugin I used was a Ocean plugin, Ocean Systems for rendered cinematics. It's pretty cool. It works pretty well for oceans mainly, but you can also change the settings down and make it look like a lake. So those are the two plugins I added. Oh, Ultra Dynamic Sky. Let's not forget that. Ultra Dynamic Sky is what I use for the sunset. It is an amazing plugin. Everyone should own that one. What you're seeing now is the Maui Auto material. Uh, it has like four different levels that you can put different materials on on your terrain. So you can have snow, you can have some water in there. You can have rocks, you can have sand or, or concrete, whatever you want. Um, so this is me playing with that, kind of doing some sculpting as well, getting the landscape looking right. Overall, this did take me a good four to five hours to like get it right. I kept coming back and I changed quite a few things. The, uh, water I wanted to make sure that looked good the terrain I had to get that looking right the sky I had to get that looking right uh, the sunset the bloom the flare the lens flare um, the camera movement and I had to get the animation uh, working right where everything would loop so it did take a lot of fine details 
that I had to go back and tweak and I probably did about three or four renders before I finally got one that I was happy with. Uh, I changed out to a different MetaHuman as well. Um, but in the end, uh, with the use of these three plugins and a, a MetaHuman and Quixel Bridge, I was able to pull this off. So if you're wanting to do something like this, I'd suggest getting a little familiar with the Gaia texture height map tool. Get the Maui auto texture plugin. Get a good water system. Get a good sky system. And uh, from there, just use Quixel Bridge and MetaHumans and you can make some pretty cool cinematics. And I did use an IK retargeter setup to work with the animation pack that I have for, I have a sitting down animation with like a hundred different animations of people sitting. But I had to use the IK retargeter process um, to get that working. This metahuman had some issues with his hair going through his shirt. So I eventually chose a different metahuman that had like a mohawk. Trying to get the sunset in the right spot, the valley, the mountain, the, the rock that he's sitting on. And it doesn't have to be just like the reference image. You can, you know, customize it however you want. I could have added some birds flying around in a circle. Could have added like a campfire. Could have added him drinking a cup of coffee or something like that. So uh, here I'm doing a little bit of post-process volume, getting the color grading right. And then 5.1, they got an anamorphic feature. So I changed the uh, squeeze ratio to 1.33 on the camera and then the crop ratio to 1.33 as well. That aspect ratio lines up a little closer with the pictures three by two ratio, I believe. And uh, I wanted to go for more of a dark look on the, the water. So I played with that for quite a bit. In the end, I ended up choosing like some, some suds, like some ocean suds. Even though it's a lake, there's still a path open to the left that I mean, it could be an ocean, so I just like the way those look because everything was a little blurred out anyways, and I wanted some sort of something you could see in the lake popping out. All right, so this is one of my first renders, definitely not the last one, but some of the settings I changed, I cranked the bloom up to about 10 uh, to get the, the sun really, you really feel the heat from the sun when you crank that bloom up. I actually turned the fog all the way down the fog was causing an issue with the, the sun. Um, I turned the lens flare up just a little bit, got some blurriness on the, uh, the bokeh. And uh, for the global illumination, it was all lumen. I cranked all those settings up in the advanced option and the post-process volume. Uh, the reflections was also lumen and uh, used high translucency as well on that. The anti-alias render settings, I set that to 96. The um, game or the override, I used R dot screen percentage and I set that to 150. I used the game override as well, set it to cinematic. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Took it into resolve after that, added a few touch-ups, uh, added a minor bit of glow a little bit of uh, extra contrast and uh, yeah, that's how everything came out. So I hope you learned something. Uh, I know this was a quick time-lapse tutorial and didn't really go into depth. It's still a 10 minute video. So I tried to cram all that down, five hours worth of uh, work and uh, a few minutes of explanation. If you want a more detailed explanation, please leave a comment let me know. Um, I might be able to make something like that if enough people are interested. Here's the final render one last time to close this video out. If you enjoyed this video or found any value in it, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help us out. And go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. That's going to wrap this video up. Thanks for your time and we will see you in the next one.